Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 6, Part 4 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, presenting further related information about the laws of compensation, focusing on the analogy of reaping what is sown in kind. This session was recorded on the 31st of October 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Compensation in kind through honesty at work. So at at my place of employment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so in this example, uh, I'm honest with my boss about having not completed a task that was expected of me mm. and required of me in the completion of my job. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this uh, again demonstrates, uh, like, remember again that the compensation laws are all trying to correct okay. unloving behaviour and and reward positive behavior so yeah. here here's some loving behavior you yes. you you did something unloving which yes. is not do your job yeah but but you're honest about it yes. you're saying well yeah i didn't do my job yeah. and uh you you're forthcoming about it yeah, yeah. and you, you're transparent and open yeah. about it um, and you don't give excuses for it or anything so, you're not trying to make excuses for it you say look i didn't do it i'm sorry i, and, I know it was my responsibility and i know it's my responsibility i'll get onto it type of thing yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that's an attitude where, y you know, you know you could get in trouble by being honest, mm -hmm. but you're honest anyway. Mm. So that demonstrates a pretty good attitude, actually, from God's perspective. Yeah. Uh, there'll be rewards to that attitude. God will attempt to and will reward those attitudes, even if the employer doesn't. Yeah. Um, if the employer, if, if it happens to be the end of a long chain of you doing that, obviously the employer might go, well, you are fired. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if, it, if it's the first time it's happened, and your employer notices a, a contrite sort of attitude within you yep. where you're honest and truthful and you want to change, yep. um, then it's highly likely the employer will overlook the issue mm. and uh, just say, well, get on the job and that's the end yep. of it type of thing. We, so now we're we talking about the compensatory rewards We are, here? but let's look at the attitude. Yep. The attitude still, the attitude of honesty, it's a willingness to face consequences even though you know you probably haven't done the right thing. Yes. Uh, it's also a willingness to be honest about your motivations for not doing the right yeah. thing. Yeah. And and all of those things mean that like a, lo a lot of really good things for you, like yeah. as we'll go through with regard to the compensation side. Yeah. So, but the attitudes de demonstrated here are very good. Mm. So, so God's going to reward them, yeah. even if the employer doesn't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get now onto the reaping in kind, and we should I should uh, remind everyone listening that this is about compensation in kind, kind yeah. it's not the complete amount of compensation, compensation. Yeah. yeah all right so in kind what would happen well firstly my boss and my colleagues uh, my workmates and and so forth my work environment mm -hmm. can, anybody in it can see that i can be trusted to tell the truth yeah. even if it's to my own detriment yes right this is a very good thing that, to see yes you know. and even if people don't think uh that person can be sure there's a there's a soul-based uh situation that occurs for them of a recognition of that mm. and that create fosters a lot of positive um potentials in relationships yeah it means that you're possibly going to be asked for your opinion when they, mm -hmm. people know that you're going to be truthful in giving it yep uh you know there's positive rewards for that usually as well in work situations because most most bosses or employers want to know when there's a problem so that they can fix it yeah. they don't you know they want to make sure that the problems get repaired mm -hmm. obviously the more problems there are in the delivery of the service the less likely people are to come back and uh and partake of the service again yes and so it's very positive if you if you're if they know that you're going to be honest and trustworthy with regard to stating the truth even though it's to your own detriment yeah then, then people can respond to that and and work upon that act upon that mm. I'm also actually going to be more likely to deal with the cause of why I didn't complete the task, aren't I? Because I'm not trying to hide it to myself or anyone else. Mm. I'm saying, yes, 
I I'm Mary it. and I've got a problem with work I completion. Did it and yeah. I'm not, you know, you might not be quite sure why you did it or yeah. you might, you know, I just, it's a job I don't like yeah. or whatever. And you'd have to address that, you know, yeah. whether that means, the, you know, moving from that position to another position to that, something you do like or yeah. getting a different attitude, you know, yeah. where you actually, in, you know, where you actually engage every task that you do with enthusiasm and joy, mm -hmm. uh, which is possible. You know, I've been, a, I've been many, have many jobs in my life. And I've had enthusiasm and joy with every one of them, including the cleaning <laughs> jobs and the toilet dunning jobs that I've had and whatever else yeah. I've done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you can develop good attitudes about every job you have. And, mm. um, you know, obviously, if you have a poor attitude, then it's something that you need to have a look at. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'm also, I also create the opportunity, if, if there is a problem with my competency or my skill set, where it's actually hard for me to complete the task, me owning up to it means that my boss or my colleagues might actually say, do you, you need, need a hand? <laughs> we better get you trained or we yeah. better help or you with fair? your time or whatever. Or is this whatever? fair to put this job on a person, <laughs> you know, like I notice a lot of times a certain person gets the same job over and over again because they're good at it, but it doesn't yeah. mean they necessarily like it. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe after a while you can say, oh, I know why I didn't do that because I'm really getting quite tired of doing jobs over and over again that all of you don't want to do and I end up doing them. Yes. Um, you know, that, that doesn't feel fair to me. Mm -hmm. And you can be honest about that. And then now there's uh, some method of correction yeah. for that to occur. Yeah. 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 Okay. So they're all very positive benefits. Um, yeah. um, it could be that your boss fires you. <laughs> um, but highly, it's highly unlikely, unlikely, I would suggest. Yeah. Uh, given the laws and given yeah. the fact that God's laws are working to your advantage here, mm -hmm. it's highly unlikely your boss will fire you. Yeah. Um, yeah if, he, if he does, I would suggest that either you've done it many times before yeah. and not owned up to it, yeah. or um, he's just an unreasonable boss. And either way, you probably shouldn't be in the job anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It might, because you're going to be reaping this compensation in kind, mm. if it is that you have a, a boss um, that says, uh, you, well, not good enough, you're out the door, you're much more likely to enter a work environment because you you've, have this attitude developed within yourself where honesty, truthfulness, problem solving, they're all going to be um, appreciated, appreciated skills, skills mm. and you're much likely, more likely to attract that kind of yes, workplace. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So sometimes it's a blessing to lose your job. It is. To uh, find another one that has a better environment. I've met and, people who say that. Yeah. And particularly an environment that matches your, your desire for truthfulness more, for example. Yes. Is always going to be a better environment. Yeah. 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 All right. Very good. Mm. Compensation in kind through dishonesty at work. Mm -hmm. So dishonesty at my workplace. In this example, I cover up to my boss about having not completed a task that was required of me. Mm -hmm. So we want to know, we want to explore what we're going to reap in kind as a result of this. Yeah, we, we might cover it up or we might obfuscate or we might... Yeah. Or we might just, just quietly yes, ignore it, ignore or, it, or, we or might, lie, or just lie outright, yes. or or we might, you know, just uh, blame just, someone else. Exactly, you yeah. know, shift the blame onto others, or do a number of things, mightn't we? Yeah. So this kind of attitude um, that God's going to be working to correct, actually, is the attitude that we have. Yeah, some very bad attitudes from yeah. God's perspective yeah. here. Lying is a very bad attitude. It, it, as I said, lying is the opposite to truth. And lying, uh, truth is a mainstay of all of God's principles and all of God's millions of laws. Mm. There's an infinite amount of laws, you know, so much more than a million laws. There's an infinite amount of laws and all of them are based on truth. Yeah. So, so you put yourself in a position where you're lying, you're now basically disobeying every single law possible mm -hmm. um, that God has. Yeah. And now that obviously is going to have, <laughs> God's, some, God's laws are going to want to correct that, yes. that desire to be dishonest. So that's the primary thing. We're yep. also lacking self-responsibility, something that was my responsibility that was handed to me and I said, yes, okay, yeah. I'll do that And I that made job. a contract by accepting money. And to, yes. In the case of work, many times yep. we're in a place where we're accepting money for our time. Yep. We've made a contract with the person and then we're refusing to honour our contract. Yeah. So it's not very self-responsible or or responsible generally. No. Uh, it also means that we're lying again. We've yeah. yeah. we made a contract and we're breaking it. Yes. So, so that's... 
And I want to really be rewarded by staying in that contract of wanting to get paid. I want to be rewarded for my lack of action. Yeah, it's almost like you're now saying, I expect to be paid without having to do what I contracted to yes. do in the first place. Yes. So it's not very fair. It's not going to uh, work out. And, it, it? and it's not a very good uh, ethic. It, it, there's no ethics there or yeah. morality. And essentially, I'm trying to avoid the consequences of my unwillingness to do something. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, and trying to avoid consequences is trying to weasel your way out of law. <laughs> and it doesn't work. <laughs> and, and that's a bad attitude from God's perspective, because everything about the whole universe is law. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, you try and weasel your way out of your human law, you're, you're going to probably demonstrate the same attitude and trying to weasel your way out of God's laws. Mm. And uh, and unfortunately, you know, well, fortunately, God's going to say, well, I need to correct this. Yeah. The laws are going to correct it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what kind of things am I going to reap in kind? And with the same flavor as what my attitude is, what will I get back? Obviously, you're going to be proven to be a liar. Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. And untrustworthy and unreliable. Yeah. And, and, you know, that doesn't look too good on a resume. So or not, only does it, yeah. not only does it harm you for the job or the mm -hmm. workplace you're in, yeah. but it also now harms you for any for future references you may get for a future job you're mm. in. Mm -hmm. It's a natural consequence. Yeah. And, and I'll really be exposed as someone who's expecting other people to take up the slack for my lack of responsibility. Yes. So in other words, I'm expecting the same reward as people who work harder than I do. Yeah. And that's yeah. not very fair. Yeah. And my lack of fairness will not only be not appreciated by my bosses, mm -hmm. but it'll also not be appreciated by my workmates. Mm. So, so not only am I you know, causing a fissure in my relationship with my work, my bosses in my employment, but I'm also now destroying my relationship with my workmates by pr by saying to them basically that they've got to take up any slack mm -hmm. or, or they've got to do things that I'm unwilling to do. So in this case, really, my lack of appreciation for the team that I'm in or the contract that I've created eventually generates a situation where other people don't appreciate me. That's right. Yeah. And they're going to see you as a as a rock, as a liability as a, as a to the liability team. To yes. the team. Yeah. And sooner or later, if anybody was employing such a person, they'd want to get rid of them. Yeah. If they could, they would. Yeah. And I, I've seen many employers paying to get rid of them, even unfortunately. Yes. But yeah. Um, but you know, you do as an employer, you feel like no, I just got to get rid of this person. This person is not not got the work ethic we need mm. yeah. and i'm certainly not going to be recommended for future tasks training Promotion. career development anything <laughs> like that because no. you can't uh, expect to be could you and people can feel even if it's not blatantly exposed my shoddy work performance People can feel that attitude within me of that course. you talked about from a soul perspective the attitude uh is not not the right attitude. Not the right attitude. And it's very hard to cover up that kind of attitude in a work environment. Of course. Yeah. And consistently to cover yeah. it up would be very hard. You'd have to yeah. sort of be buried in a very large company probably in order to cover <laughs> up the attitude. Or everyone in the company must have the same attitude before it's tolerated generally. Yes. Yeah. So there's a high likelihood I'm going to lose my job as well. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. therefore I'll lose my sustenance oftentimes. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, the way the world works today, people don't give you things for... Hmm. And... and, and Fortunately, the way the world works today, nobody gives you anything for nothing generally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, the fact is you don't want to do anything, but you still want to get things. And that's, that's an attitude that everybody, including God and the world, doesn't like very much. Yes. <laughs> and so what, what about the implications after I pass? If I've had a long work career, of which there are some people who don't have a very high work ethic, they remain employed, but mm -hmm. and they might even get away with being buried in a large organisation. Uh, orga uh, Tolerates their poor yes. behaviour. Uh, yes, um, you know when they pass, their attitude is still remains. And mm -hmm. remember, we're talked about here. They're really being dishonest. They're still lying. They've not honoured their contract, which is a lie. They're not, uh, you know, they're not being demonstrated love to the other people. They're all, from God's perspective, very severe emotional and spiritual problems mm -hmm. and so they're going to find themselves it's highly likely they'll find themselves in the hells of yeah. the spirit world for a period of time mm -hmm. until they clean up their act yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay mm. compensation in kind for having sexual fidelity 
So we've talked a bit about sexual fidelity in an earlier part of this session, but mm. now I'll give a specific example and perhaps in a way that people don't necessarily associate with sexual fidelity or infidelity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in this scenario, uh, my sexual feelings are for my sexual partner only. I take personal responsibility for my feelings of worth and never demand or expect a member of the opposite sex to give me anything physical or emotional, to assist me to feel better about myself or to validate my superiority. So again, we want to know what kind of things I'm going to reap in kind as a result of this attitude. Yeah, and, very positive attitude. Yes. Very positive attitude. So these are attitudes, again, that will be rewarded by the law of compensation. So mm -hmm. we just look at uh, the attitudes themselves. Firstly, I'm sexually moral. Yes. Secondly, um, I'm sexually, I have sexual fidelity. Yes. In other words, I'm faithful yep. sexually as well. I have some self-responsibility. In other words, I'm not expecting other people to give me things so that I can rub out how I feel about things. Yes, or so, maintain so, a facade of myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I'm, so I'm not expecting you to give me sex in order for me to feel good about myself, yeah. for example. Yeah. And this, is, this demonstrates a high level of self-responsibility where yes. I'm now going, no, if I feel bad about myself, it's because of things I need to correct within myself and I shouldn't use sex which is a, a lovely gift that another person can give me, I shouldn't use sex as a means mm. to avoid how I feel about myself. Mm. And so that's really good. I obviously demonstrating my love for my specific partner, my sexual partner. Yes. Because I'm saying to them, while you're in a relationship with me, I am going to be in a relationship with you. Like, yes. and I am going to be sexually faithful to you. And it's not going to be sexually faithful on the outward appearance. It's an emotion coming out of me. Going, I already am. Sexually. I already am sexually faithful to you. Yeah. There is no one. There's no. I don't like look look at another woman's body and go. Oh, I'd like to have sex with her. Or, mm -hmm. And I don't go. Or I don't go. Oh, this woman's willing to give me some sexual feelings. So I'm just going to sit there and enjoy it, or yeah. any of that kind of thing. I don't yeah. do any of these things with any other per with any person, including you. In fact. Mm. So so I my gift of sex to you is a gift and your gift of sex to me is a gift and I'm not seeing it as a bartering system. No. Or something that I can demand or expect. It's not something you're entitled to and certainly uh, a gift that you give and a gift that you may receive. Yeah. yeah. If you receive it, yeah. And I'm honouring this gift that God gave me to engage sexually with the partner. Yeah. This is a, a, a wonderful gift it's free, <laughs> like it's free enjoyment. You yeah. know, it's very hard in the world nowadays to get that kind of enjoyment of things. And um, it's a beautiful gift that you can give another and they can give you and, and you respect all of that. Mm. So it demonstrates a great deal of respect for mm -hmm. God's gifts that God's given you as an individual. Mm -hmm. So these are all really, really good things, of course, that yes. will be rewarded. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about how they're rewarded. Because it's actually quite a high uh, spiritual condition to have this level of development about sexuality. Yes, it is. Um, I know it's looked down upon by the world uh, today. You know, most people in the world today sort of see, if not being sexually unfaithful, but they don't see like, you know, having thoughts of wanting to have sex with another person as being sexually unfaithful, mm. for example. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, you know, this is true sexual faithfulness. Yep. And it's a very rare thing to find yes. on the planet. Yes. Mm. Okay, so what am I going to reap in kind? Well, firstly, the sexual expression and love between myself and my partner will definitely grow. Yeah. My partner will feel a sense of trust and faith in my sexual fidelity. They'll, f they'll feel my desire for them mm -hmm. and enjoy that. They know it's only for them mm -hmm. and they'll enjoy that it is only for mm -hmm. them. And uh, that will improve their response sexually and emotionally to me um, so that there's a high likelihood of my relationship improving markedly over time rather than slowly degrading over time. Yes, yes. Um, and I'll have a higher sense of sexual worth because I, I'm not doing anything to generate shame. Correct. And I'm also in that place because I'm not generating shame in myself, 
I'm also not uh, using sex to shame my partner. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not uh, going to be doing things like that cause my partner to feel like if they don't give me sex, that they should be ashamed of themselves, for that example. they're inadequate or prudish yeah. or... Because, um, I, because I'll see frigid or sex whatever. as a gift, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and if there is a problem with regard to openness in my partner, I will talk about it openly. Yes. I won't, you know, try to manoeuvre around the issue by bartering something else in order to get sex. Yeah. I, I will speak openly and directly about what the issue actually is. Yes. Instead of trying to obfuscate around the issue and avoid the issue. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Um, so, and with people who are not my sexual partner, I'll actually have better relationships with them as well, won't I? Yes, because uh, they will know that um, my they will know that my sex is only for my partner, and they won't be trying to get sexual feelings from me, mm -hmm. and they'll know that I will not give them sexual feelings, mm -hmm. and and I will attract people who don't desire those sexual feelings from me, yeah. which means now there's no hidden undertones in every relationship. You know, there's a common say, sta statement on the planet that, you know, no man and woman can have a platonic, platonic relationship, yeah. which is completely untrue. Yeah. It's only true on the earth at the moment because the majority of people don't have this feeling of sexual yeah. fidelity yeah. towards one person. And so I'll also be encouraging self-responsibility and sexual morality in the people around me. So uh, while I'm attracting people who, who have more of this sense through the law of attraction, I'll also be encouraging it in those who, by not responding to people who may want to uh, engage with me sexually, um, whether it's um, emotionally or physically, mm. by, by having this solid feeling of morality within myself, I'll be encouraging them to be more responsible for what their condition is right now. That's right. And some of them may feel quite angry or challenged by that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, that's necessary for them to get to the same condition. Yeah. They need to work through their issues regarding the, the issue yeah. of sexual morality. Yeah. 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 In addition, uh, I'll have regard for my soulmate relationship. So, mm. so by having regard for it, there's a higher likelihood I will attract my soulmate. Yeah. And and this uh, is going to be very good for my complete future, my everlasting future, because obviously in the end we are halves of one whole. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's in the end what you want to do. You want to develop your soulmate feelings. Now, if that means my current partner is my soulmate, over time that will be exposed. Yeah. But because I've been sexually faithful to the partner, yes. And once I say, well, I, I feel quite strongly you're not my soulmate, and and and. I've been faithful the whole time. By the time you get to the stage where you go, oh, well, I'm, you know, you're not my soulmate, you may spend a bit of time alone then for a period of time mm. where until you find your soulmate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and that will help you greatly for when your soulmate arrives. She will then feel like, or he will then feel like, you are sexually faithful to them. Yes. Which is a necessary requirement of the soulmate relationship. Mm. Yeah, mm. for that relationship to really commence, it mm. needs to happen. Mm. And also any partner I have, we've talked about having a higher sense of worth personally because of not engaging with shameful things, but any partner I have will also grow this sense of sexual worth uh, just through my attitude. Uh, it's still up to them, isn't it? But it promotes it, it promotes it. It promotes them. it, but you know they still will need to feel emotions yeah. in order to grow the condition. Yeah. But it certainly promotes the condition, mm. yes. Mm. Mm. Uh, we can talk about children, mm -hmm. the the in-kind kind of uh, rewards for them. My children will are far more likely to, one, be open to the concept of soulmates, yes. be open to their own sexuality in a moral way. Yes. Um, and there's a and much higher likelihood they'll have good relationships that last long periods of time. And be responsible with people that they engage with yes. sexually. And yeah. also their friends who are of the opposite gender or, you know, their opposite sexual preference, or their yeah. sexual preference, if you like, yeah. they, they will not feel like sexually or emotionally taken from every time yeah. they spend time with them. And they're not going to be objectified. They're as, not going to be objectified yeah. as a sexual object. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you touched on this already, it's very much more likely that I'll have the potential to meet my soulmate on earth yes. because of this desire for this moral, pure kind of a sexual engagement. 
God's, the person that God's designed for me to engage with in that way is more likely to be drawn. To feel that. They'll feel that and be pulled towards it. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, There's a lot of good things that come from it. (laughs) (laughs) Compensation in kind from immoral sexual projection. Mm. So in this scenario, um, I constantly sexually project at others who are not my sexual partner and I demand that they validate my sense of sexual and emotional worth. Mm. So I've got this emotional sexual energy going out of me towards people of my attraction and gen- mm-hmm. gender attraction mm-hmm. uh, and I constantly want some emotion in return that's going to make me feel good sexually about myself mm. and worthy as a person. And we should point out here that quite often it goes to both genders, unfortunately. Yeah, it so does, yeah. it's, we don't even know what our sexual attraction is often in this yeah. place yeah. because we're driven totally by the addiction of our sexual feelings yeah. rather than by driven by a soul-based feeling of like, of the true knowledge of my own sexual identity, if you like. Because mm-hmm. I'm in this place, I'm severely disconnected from my really... Um, personality-based sexual feelings. I'm totally engaging with sexual feelings in an addictive way. That's right. And I don't really care what their source is, whether it's male or female or whatever. I don't really care what the source is. So here here I'm demonstrating a number of attitudes, obviously, that need to be corrected and and that are essential for being corrected for my future happiness, actually. Mm -hmm. So firstly, I have a lack of sexual fidelity. I obviously lack the value of the loving expression of sexual emotions. I lack self-responsibility or even not self-knowledge of my own sense of sexuality, what yeah. my own sexuality is. Yeah. I, I lack respect for my sexual relationship with my current partner, if yeah. I have one. Yeah. And I also really lack respect for the soulmate, soulmate relationship. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's quite... And, and if you lack respect for the soulmate relationship, there's no ability for the two halves of the soul to merge. So, yeah. so now... I'm precluding my future growth through that attitude. So, so obviously God's laws are going to have penalties that correct yes. this behaviour. Yes. Yep. I'm basically showing I'm not trustworthy to be faithful. I'm not trustworthy to regard any partner I have, aren't I? Mm. And, and also demonstrating that there's a high likelihood that uh, you may cause sexual hurt in, a, in your yes. partner. That's the you attitude. Because you're yeah. sharing your sexual energy with others. Yeah. Now your partner who's risking their emotions and heart in your relationship, yeah. you know, there's a high likelihood that uh, you will, you know, treat your partner badly, badly in that place or, or without any sexual fidelity. And that, and that frequently, if a person has become open to you and they have other emotions that may be hurt by it, um, they'll feel quite hurt by that sort, yeah. sort of, uh, you know, attitude, if you like. Yeah. Of course, once you get to the stage where you're one with God, you don't feel hurt by those attitudes, mm-hmm. but you still probably know you know that you can't engage that person sexually until their sex is just for you. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's talk specifically about the compensation in kind that um, I would encounter if this was me. Yes. So obviously the first one is an unhappy sexual partner yes. who knows that you know you're going to be unfaithful probably and they can never really trust you yes and they don't feel valued do they because you don't there's nothing special about your sexual interaction that's right you will share your sexual energy with anyone yeah who comes along or or other people which means that there's nothing special sexually about your relationship with them Yeah. yeah um so yeah it's a so your lack of regard for your own sexual identity and sexual self creates a lack of regard for your sexual partner, whoever that is. Yes. Yeah. And and your sexual partner will obviously withdraw sexually from you over a period of time. Whether they do that physically or just emotionally, they'll do it. Well, it usually begins emotionally. Yeah. And then eventually it eventuates into something physical and sexual yeah. where they eventually detune and eventually detune into somebody else who, yeah. who's more more in harmony with the proper attitude of having sexual morality yeah yeah and so that means for me i end up in a state of loneliness i end up in a state where my addiction to my worth is not getting met so i feel kind of 
pretty bad about myself. And I might highly likely maybe engage in more sexual immorality, which exposes me to potential disease. Exposes my partner or my soulmate, whoever my soulmate is, it's a further division between me and my soulmate. Correct, and exposes my soulmate to potentially having to deal with the fact that I have a disease. Yeah. Um, It also, um, I I will, because of the attractions that I now are encouraging, I will probably attract situations where my faithfulness is tested. Well, I can easily be unfaithful (laughs) because I'm, I'm carrying around this attitude of like, um, anyone's if you give me a certain feeling and and a lot of times it you know for some it's give them a sense uh, wealth for mm-hmm. for some women it's wealth for some men it's like give me a sense of sexual worth or give or me a sense that I'm superior or, yeah. or, or give me a sense that I'm, I'm a great guy or yeah. whatever just simple things sometimes yeah. and, and and we're so addicted to it that we're willing to sacrifice ourselves sexually in order to obtain those emotions yes and that's where, where our error is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we're demonstrating in that place too that sex isn't very important to us actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're thinking that it's important, yeah. but the reality is we're demonstrating that it's not very precious. It's not, it's yeah. not, a, it's not a precious thing It's anymore. funny, people who have these kinds of injuries are often very fixated on sex and having sex and it's, uh, you know, sex is so important to them, yeah. but in reality, from God's perspective, they don't value it at all. At all. They no. just value what it's they get. It's just a commodity yes. to get something else from, you yeah. know, to get the other thing from. Yeah. And and under those circumstances, a true sexual relationship that's happy can't be obtained. No, so, never. Yeah, yeah, you preclude yourself from obtaining a, yeah. a good sexual relationship that's based upon the gift gifts of love, you know. Yes. Mm. And this is the way, again, the compensation in kind is occurring. There's no value for it, so there can never be a value-worthy relationship created. That's right. Because you're sowing something that is saying it's not worth anything and so you don't end up with a relationship that's And you're really any saying the sexual fidelity of others who are your partner is not worth anything to you. Yeah. That's really what you're saying yeah. as well to them. Yeah. So it's not, it, you're basically, you know, something that might be precious to them, you're basically belittling. Mm. You're also, you're also uh, going to have less fulfilling and uh, good relationships with p- p- people who are not your partner. Yeah. Because because they're going to feel your sleazy uh, sexual taking yeah. here, here your your attitudes. They're going to eventually feel, and they're going to know. Yeah, you're pretty off, right? Mm. What, what about your wife over there, type of thing? Yeah. Or what about yeah. your husband over there? That doesn't seem to matter to you, you know. Mm. Like, and so they're going to notice that kind of behaviour. And if if they're wise and and truthful with you, they'll expose that to you. Yes, and. Uh, 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 and also, if they had any value of their own sexual self, they'd probably say, "Look, I don't want to spend time with you. Why you like that with me?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we're not going to have a very good sense of our personal worth, are we? Not and really. And we're not going to promote that in our partner. That's really the attitude that we we're trying to. Um, in fact, it's highly likely we are going to destroy the sexual worth of our partner or yeah. or. or there's a potential of that occurring. Yes. And even though, so in this place, we usually have a sense of sexual superiority yeah. ourselves, which is driven from some underlying emotion mm. of inferiority, obviously, yeah. but but we have a sense of sexual superiority. But the worst person that's going to be for ourselves is our partner. Highly likely our partner's not going to endure the relationship. No. Um, and because in this condition, we use a lot of, we feel the um, injury within the partner because we're so hungry for this worth or this validation or the superiority through the sexual engagement. We utilize whatever sexual injury they have against them to get the sex. Yeah, it's very destroying to yeah. the relationship. Uh, usually very manipulative. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very bad for a relationship, yeah. and, and usually relationships like this don't last. And if they last a long time, it's because of the severe lack of uh, self-worth of our partner, yeah. which, which we're further engaged in destroying. Yes. Um, so that, that's yeah. not very kind or considerate. And the same thing happens with people who aren't our partner, who we want the sexual energy from. We do end up being devious and using whatever injuries they have to try and get them to comply with our emotional demands. Demands. Exactly. Yeah. Frequently that happens. So you can see how this sowing of this injury leads to some very serious reaping, like 
Yeah. Um, and obviously, if you've got these kind of attitudes towards your other half, your soulmate, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you're not going to have a relationship with her or him. And then on top of that, if you've got these terrible attitudes, the other half of yourself, a relationship with God's not going to be possible. No. Um, because you, you you're treating the other half of yourself very badly, mm. as well as treating yourself badly, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it also is highly likely that any children you have yeah. are going to either rebel against your condition or mirror it. Yeah. So in other words, they'll rebel against it by going, I'm sick of your sexual infidelity. I hate it. I can't stand you because of it. You mm -hmm. know, that's what they'll feel. Mm -hmm. And they'll be looking. They'll be looking to marry every person they meet, <laughs> <laughs> as in want want a solid commitment. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. They, they, you know, will have a tendency to overcompensate. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say overcompensate, instead of being patient to find the one person, they'll they'll just find the first person and marry them and yeah. live with them for forty years yeah. <laughs> before they realise their mistake. You know yeah. what I mean? That's the kind of children that rebel against this kind of behavior yeah. or a child who supports it will go well oh, you know yeah this is normal like, yeah and i'm fine to carry I'm fine on and carry on the same way my parents do yeah mm. yeah and um finally and again we need to say this is not an exhaustive list of, of all course the not. <laughs> but uh we're very highly unlikely to meet our soulmate while we're on earth yes uh, in fact probably impossible for us to meet them given and the fact that we don't have a sexual connection with them. Yeah. Mm. If we do meet them, we're unlikely to recognise them. Unlikely to recognise them and unlikely to feel a sexual connection yeah. with them. Yeah. And it would only be based on the the um, desires of the other half of our soul that we, that we might even enter a relationship that is based around any kind of Correct. truth or so love. So the other half of our soul may have more of a feeling of sexual fidelity yep. and that may attract them to us. Yes. And we may enter the relationship under those circumstances, but, uh, you know, which does happen, of course. Yeah. But, but again, it's not a soulmate relationship yet. No. And, and, in, and it's going to be a very traumatic relationship, particularly for the other half. Mm. 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 Okay, thank you. Okay, everyone. Well, that concludes our sixth session in this series, which is designed to help you understand more about the processes of forgiveness and repentance. Mm. And in this session and a couple of months prior, we've been focusing heavily on compensation um, because that has relevance, a, a, an extreme amount of relevance to forgiveness and repentance. But let's just do a little recap of what we've covered in each of the sessions. Thus far. Thus far. Yep. Uh, so you know where, where we've been and <laughs> then we'll let you know where we're headed. Uh, and hopefully it all starts to hang together in a series that is building upon knowledge so that by the time we get to the end, you'll have a really clear understanding of how God's laws are operating uh, to encourage us towards forgiveness and repentance and then how they operate to assist us to work through true forgiveness and repentance. Mm. So casting our mind right back to the beginning, we talked about God's truth, how God's truth uh, is engaging God's laws and how God's laws and truth about uh, what are God's laws and God's truth about forgiveness and repentance. So that was our basic thing with session one. Yes. Session two, as a reminder, we focused on the process uh, of that we need to engage and the emo what it, that we highlighted that it is a very emotional process that you're going to engage it's mm. going to involve your heart and soul yes and we talked about that and i suppose we can see from the conversation discussion we've had mm -hmm. that you know there's quite a lot of emotions involved isn't there and, yes. and the conversation laws are all trying to correct the emotions that are unloving and trying to reward the emotions that are loving so mm. you can see that it is a very emotional feeling based process it's going to be then we, uh, in session three, we focus more on the responsibility to forgive and repent. We, we looked at the accidental versus intentional sin, and we accidental in quotation marks because yeah. there's no real accidents in God's system. And we looked at this process of being sincere with regard to forgiveness and repentance, what sincerity uh, would be involved, you know, what, mm -hmm. what, what, it, what it is in, mm. to be sincere, to in, sincerely repentant or to sincerely forgive another. Yeah. 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 Session four is when we started to introduce the um, significance of the laws of compensation and how yeah. they relate to forgiveness and repentance. 
And we talked about this analogy, which we're going to continue to expand on in coming sessions that we've used a bit today about the analogy of sowing and reaping. Yes. What I do has an effect and how that plays out. Yes. And we talked a lot about what, when we pass, what, what happens in terms of compensation after we pass. Yeah. And so in session five, we just continued that discussion. We talked a bit more about the different effects of compensation and so forth. And, and we talked more about the feelings and emotions involved in a conversation. And, and the feelings of emotion in this part involved in sin and mm -hmm. personal truth as well. Because obviously we can see now that, you know, there's a lot to do with emotional work here yeah. to get yourself from a condition where you want to sin to a condition where you want to repent and you want to forgive. So compensation is the is a part of the tools that God uses to bring us to that point. To that point. Yeah. Yeah, and so now today, which has been our sixth session, we have, we're starting, which is actually probably going to be a series of three sessions within this whole series, probably. <laughs> um, talking about the, the um, reliability of the laws of compensation and how that really plays out in terms of the quality and type of compensation that we experience. So today we talked about reaping in kind. Mm. Um, in our next session, we got, or in our next couple of sessions, we're going to talk about how compensation is commensurate. That means it's it's always um, the amount of effort we put in is always <laughs> reflected <laughs> in the results that we get exactly. in, com in terms of compensation. And then we'll talk about the effect of just. Doing nothing. Doing nothing. Giving up. Oh, that's it. I'm, I don't. I want to avoid this whole conversation thing, so I bow out. Yeah. And Which so God's laws don't let us do. They do don't it? let us do that. There's compensation for that. <laughs> exactly. So we'll talk so, about what that is like. Exactly. So it should be uh, the next couple of talks about conversation should be quite interesting as well. And then after the conversation talks, we'll get on to the conscience because that also plays a part in forgiveness and repentance and as well. Yeah, that's right. It's quite a tangible thing that people often associate with, uh, particularly with repentance, yeah. our conscience bothering us. So yeah. I'm looking forward to those discussions. Yeah. So we're looking forward to your company for the next uh, few, few uh, sessions. Um, we, as we said, we probably think now that this is probably going to go on for uh, another, well, there's another Quite three and then there's a few more after that, so probably another six sessions or so, uh, which means that we won't be finished by Christmas by the way we're going, <laughs> and that's the way it works. But uh, hopefully you're, you're enjoying the knowledge that, uh, about these matters, and also what we're discussing will form the foundation of uh, feedback that we want to give to different people about the, the questions they have about forgiveness and repentance and the, how to engage forgiveness and repentance and what it feels like in your life. There's quite a lot of good questions that have come up from different uh, people uh, who have been listening. And so we would like to answer those questions now with, using this series of talks as a framework, if you like, mm -hmm. to, uh, to answering those questions. So and we, hopefully today, with our heavy focus on compensation, will help to uh, bring your awareness to many things and ways that God is trying to attempt is attempting to move you towards a sincere process of forgiveness and repentance already. Yes, trying, he's trying to motivate your desire yeah. <laughs> to voluntarily enter the state of forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. And, uh, and obviously, if we can do that, then the compensatory effects of, of our sin are going to be much reduced if we can engage the forgiveness and repentance paths. So this is why we need to have these conversations. And so we look forward to your company in our next conversations about conversation and uh, for the moment we're just going to thank our recorders uh, our, our, our uh, happy team. team out of the back there yeah. who, who have been patiently switching yeah. us through this video and uh, also we need to there's a fair bit for myself and in particular myself and Lena to do to get these videos out to you so that's what yes. we're going to focus on for the next week or so yeah. <laughs> trying to get the, all the videos we've done up to now which is quite a few I think there's close to 40 hours now of material that we've yet to finalise and get out. So yeah. by this stage, you, by the time you watching watching this one, <laughs> you'll have found the first crop of <laughs> all of the new material that we've yeah. produced this year. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks, thanks, thank you. everyone, for your company, and thanks, Mary, for doing this with me today. Thank you, darling. Yeah. Now we can pleasure. get to spend some time to each other. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so good night, everyone. See you later. <laughs>